Hello my fellow storytellers. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you guys how to port a reflective metal texture from Blender to Source Engine and make that wonderful reflective Valve material file. All right, let's get into it. So first off, I've pre-made this reflective metal texture for us. It has many different points of which it reflects and which it doesn't reflect, which is useful whenever you wish to have something really interesting in your level. So let's go first to our shading tab, click on the object that you, uh, that has our, that has your texture and have, be sure to have a image node. Now, you can add an image node by doing shift A and searching image texture and then that will give you a fresh new image node. Now I have created this image node for us and the size of the image that we're going to um, create is a 4K texture. Source surprisingly does support 4K textures. You just need to set a specific setting in the material file to uh, unlimited and that you could literally go crazy on that and make an insanely detailed image for your textures. So what we're going to do is that first we're going to bake our diffuse and the way to do that is that you go to the baking tab of Blender and be sure to uncheck direct and indirect so that it doesn't bake the lighting of which that exists in your 3D space onto the image. You don't want that when you're making a texture. Uh, you just want the pure colors. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right. Now that our diffuse map is baked, we need to save it to a uh, location. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to save it in a file called tutorial. And if I press save as here, uh, this is my tutorial file and look, and it's saved right there. I'm going to save it again, just for extra measure. And then I am going to create our normal and our roughness maps. Normal maps, they create the extra detail on the surface of your texture. And then roughness, they tell the engine what is more reflective and what is less reflective. So in Source's case, it's going to tell um, uh, Source, hey, this is uh, more like a mirror or this is more matte like a drywall. Or in this case, different portions of metal being more matte and more reflective. So I am going to bake those by creating a new texture and calling it C underscore metal underscore N for normal and then put 32 bit float and then multiply it by four, multiply the default size by four so that we have a 4K texture so that it's four of 40, 96 pixels from top to bottom. Then press OK and then now we have our new image that we can bake on. Now I'm going to bake the normal and roughness maps and I'll see you guys at the material file creation. Alrighty, so here we are in VMT editor. This, we're going to be using this tool to create our um, valve material files and our valve texture files. Now you could also use VTF edit, which is another tool that you can create uh, that you can use to create um, valve material files. However, using VMT editor is a little bit easier. All right. So first things we're going to do is that we're going to grab our diffuse texture that we created from Blender. So I'm going to go to my tutorial um, folder and get the um, get the diffuse texture. So now I have the diffuse texture. Next, I'm going to get the normal texture and then grab the roughness uh, texture, which that is going to be important for our reflective service. Now, be sure to 
uh, check mark use cube map when uh, considering making a reflective material in source engine. Whenever that is not checked, it is going to be looking for a file that you created that has a reflection for the material because the way sources reflections work is that it takes a 360 view of whatever area that you are reflecting and lays it on top of the texture so that it looks like a reflection but that is why you don't see the player moving in the reflection because it is a static image whenever we have used cube map selected it uses the cube map entity within hammer to generate a 360 view image for you so that you could have accurate reflections of your game play space you could use the um the reflection image the non cube map um, mode and for special circumstances such as if you wanted the reflection to be a artistic expression type of thing stuff like that but we're going to use a cube, a cube map just to make it simple and consistent now our mask is going to be our roughness map that we created so go to uh, the, your tutorial folder or whatever folder that you created for your roughness map and place that at on the mask and now we're done in BMT editor save your save your uh, texture within a uh, folder within your mod such as your source mod like uh, like mod like your mod folder stuff like that and your mod folder should be within the steam apps folder underneath the subfolder source mods and then in there will be your DLLs and all that stuff that will give the details of your game you're going to put this within the materials folder of that folder so uh, I am going to place my um, valve material there and I'm just going to name the folder tutorial just just for just for uh, simplicity and I'm going to name this instead of untitled I'm going to name it um, C underscore metal so that we can find it easily in hammer all right after BMT edit created all your textures uh, it should be ready to go and hammer should automatically view it in the hammer editor all right let's go over to hammer now. all right so here we are in hammer plus plus now I already made this little uh, box for us uh, so that we can uh, view our texture now what I'm using for uh, a light source is a light underscore environment entity this is really good for making sure your reflective texture looks right within a outside environment if you're going for more of an interior environment you should create a, an entire interior environment and then set your lights up to see how good it reflects so what we're going to do in order for source to build the reflections for us on our reflective texture we have to add an entity called an environment underscore cube map so we add So we add env underscore cube map. And when you press apply, you should see a little chrome sphere appear. As you can see right here. And what you want to do is that you want to place it as close to the center of your room as possible. And the reason why is because it shows a 360 degree view of the area around it which then it displays on the reflection as the reflection on your texture. So we're going to place this in the center and right around, right around player eye height. And to, uh, so, so I'm going to change the graph a little bit. So that's right around player height. 
change the graph a little bit. And you know, if you wish to change the graph, uh, these two grid buttons right here uh, shrink and expand the grid so that you can get different types of um, you can get different types of detail. Let me close this window here so that you guys could see the entire view and have uh, how I have all of this set up. All right. So I have all this set up like this. And now we're going to run our map. You'll see this little dialog window pop up. Uh, I got this window because I am currently uh, debugging the source uh, 2013 engine. So usually when you have the 2013, when you have the 2013 SDK, this will not normally pop up unless you are debugging a game. So I'm just going to close that real quick. All right, so here we have our texture, but as you notice, it is not reflective. Now you're probably wondering, how do you make it reflective? Well, we need to build our cube maps. And that's what that cube map entity we created for is used for. So we do, we press in the command box, build cube maps, press enter, and you'll see this little photo box appear in the top left-hand corner. And after that, you can see the reflections of your texture. Pretty cool, huh? Now, there is a problem with this though. Not with the texture itself, but with the source SDK. When, uh, when the SDK was updated, I believe around 2013, within Valve's standard compiler, they created a function this is getting into a little bit of programmer lingo. They created a function that breaks reflections whenever there is a skybox present. So if you use the standard uh, VBSP uh, compiler that comes with the uh, source 2013 SDK, these will not work if you have a skybox. If you get rid of the skybox, then the reflections will generate normally using the cube map. So I'm going to show you guys in Visual Studio how to use the SDK to fix this problem and create your own execute your own um, VBSP executable that you could use in Hammer to gen uh, to allow you to generate reflections. So I'm going to exit out of the engine real quick, and I'll see you guys soon in Visual Studio. All right. So here we are in Visual Studio in the source everything SDK. There's two SDKs that, well, SDK project files that you get when you get the source SDK, um, uh, when you get the source SDK file. And these two project, Visual Studio project files are generated by um, the Valve project cr uh, creator, which the instructions uh, to generate these files are in the two bat files that you get from the or, uh, source SDK. Anyway, uh, we're, we don't need to get into that for uh, the reasons of uh, this tutorial, but this is just if you wish to uh, fix the problem with the skyboxes in, um, in uh, the source 2013 SDK. So what you need to do is that you need to go to um, the VBSP project in the source SDK solution. And in the source SDK solution, under, under the VBSP project, you're going to go look for a file called vbsp.cpp. So right here. This file is going to contain the code that generates all the properties of your level. So let's open that up. Let me move to the side here. And what you're going to do is that you are going to, you are going to scroll down to line 800. So let me scroll down here real quick. And then on line, excuse me, I'm at line 860. On line 860, you'll see a little function called 
cube map underscore create default cube maps. And what this function does is that it turns your skybox into a cube map. That we do not want to use because it just completely breaks our reflections because it what the what the skybox sees is the void and in the void it's just total darkness so all your cube maps will just be a matte black and nothing will work so what we do to fix that problem is that we need to comment out the uh this line right here this function now it was already commented out because i went in and compiled my own executable so that i can make the reflections work for this tutorial so after you do that you then go up to um debug uh, not, uh, you need to make sure that you keep the um, file in debug mode. Go up to um, build and then not build solution, build the BSP because that will just build the executable for you. And then after it builds, after it builds, you then take the VBSP executable that you have that you have created from this and then you move it to the bin folder of your mod folder so i will show you guys how to do that real quick all right so here we are in the windows file explorer and in within the source sdk here is the everything sln uh here's the everything sln and here's the games SLN. The everything SLN is what we used to compile a new um, a new ex a VBSP executable. So to find the VBSP executable within the SDK, you're going to look within utils, then VBSP, and then debug. And within the debug, you should find a small little executable on, underneath the name vbsp.exe. We're going to copy that and then we are going to move to our mod folder, our specifically our mods bin folder. Within our mods folder, we then navigate to the bin folder and within the bin folder, we are going to replace the VBSP that is within the bin folder. Then after we replace it, we then can go to Hammer. And in Hammer, you go to Tools, Options, and then within your um, game configure, not wait, not game configurations, within your build programs tab, we then select which um, which folder that contains your VBSP executable that you created. All right, that's it for this tutorial on how to create your reflections within Source Engine. I hope this is helpful for any of your mod slash game creation needs. Have a good day, everyone.